Well, hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of testing audio amplifiers with the test tones that have the built-in pilot signal. And on this end, we're looking more at the oscilloscopes. You know, I have fairly limited equipment here. I don't have a fancy bench, but the stuff I have does well enough for testing amplifiers. I have my music player and run the signal into the preamp. The output of the preamp will go to this load resistor 1K and we'll scope across that just for this demonstration. Now you probably know the scope I use if you watch my other videos, the Rigold DS1052E, kitty cat included. Now this scope has been out quite a while. It's bottom of the line and it's been out for about 10 years so it's getting long in the tooth there's a lot nicer scopes you can get for a little bit more money but you know this will do the job okay I have everything set up and turned on I'll assume you have a basic working knowledge of an oscilloscope okay well the first thing is to get enough information into the scope you know this is a digital instrument and you want to have enough amplitude or the uh, spectrum analyzer will show you too much noise and it's hard to uh, see the distortion properly. You don't want to go beyond the edge of the screen because you might clip and get a lot of harmonics. And when you're measuring a signal, the amplifier might start to clip. You might be trying to measure the maximum power before clipping and it may not all, go all the way to the edge as long as you got the screen mostly full don't try to work with a small signal like this turn up your amplitude and you know fill the screen as much as you can next thing is getting enough cycles of the waveform on the screen with this scope having about four to six cycles works the best this is too much this is not enough I'm talking about how the FFT graph looks when we turn that on. And I'll go ahead and turn that on. So I hit the math button here and it's already set for FFT. And I want to use the Hanning window. That gives me the best display. And the blue waveform is the spectrum analyzer mode. So let me go back to the channel here. You see it kind of squunches up the signal if I don't have enough waveforms and it spreads it out more which could work but you're missing some of your higher harmonics. So let me turn that down there and I can turn off the channel it's still receiving the signal. So now you're seeing the spectrum analyzer mode of the scope. It's also called FFT, which stands for Fast Fourier Transform. And that's just a technical name for it. So what the Spectrum Analyzer mode does, it takes us from the amplitude versus time, you know, the waveform, and puts it into amplitude versus frequency. So now we're seeing um, this one kilohertz fundamental, and each step would be a one kilohertz because this here is 4.5 that's my one percent pilot signal now another thing you might want to adjust with your scope is the acquisition uh, hit your acquisition button here and if it has a high res mode you want to use that um, sometimes you get better results with this scope in peak detect you can see see how I lost some of those peaks I get I get some false peaks in normal mode so I want to use peak detect mode on this scope there's articles online I think Agilent has some articles about um, Keysi whatever they call themselves now about setting up your spectrum analyzer mode and that's where I got that information from. So when I use peak detect, I get a better waveform. That's pretty much it. 
But now I want to do one more thing. I want to see how small of signal I can see on this oscilloscope. So what I want to do is go to my music player. I have some more tones with built-in pilot signals at different levels. So let me go to the menu here. This is 0.5%. And yeah, it's about half of what the other tone was. So I went back to 1 and now I'm back to 0.5. This is 0.3%, so we can still see that node. This is 0.2%. It's starting to get lost in the, the noise floor, but I can still see the 0.2 percent pretty clearly and we'll try 0.1 percent well it's pretty much indeterminate it's lost in the noise now now let me go to no added distortion okay there's no distortion added now let me go up to 0.1 Yeah, maybe. It's just too hard to see it in the noise floor there. Let me go back to zero. Let me go back to point one. Yeah, maybe the littlest blip, but there's there's no way in normal use I could use that. If I go up to point two, clearly I can see the blip. So this is an 8-bit scope. So there's 256 steps that can be digitized. And if you invert that number and multiply that by 100 to get percent, I should be only able to see down to 0.39 percent. You know, roughly 0.4. So how is it possible that I can see 0.2 percent on an 8-bit scope? Somebody tried to tell me that. Oh, you can't see below... 0.4 percent because it's an 8-bit scope well that's not true you can actually see lower and you know we saw the 0.3 we're seeing the 0.2 and the reason for that is called oversampling oversampling allows you to see a bit more resolution it get it allows you to get a little more resolution from your bit depth so that's how we're seeing it on this scope so this instrument will allow me to test amplifiers, make sure they're not putting out excessive distortion. No, I'm not going to be able to see distortion down to 0.001% or whatever, ultra high fi type stuff. It's debatable if you can hear distortion below 1% in normal music anyway. Some people will argue against that, but yeah, I find it hard to believe. So if the amplifier puts out distortion that's well below the uh, reference marker that I'm showing here. I just turned it back to the 1% pilot signal. You know, I, the amplifier is doing well enough. Well, hope this made some sense to you and stick around. Got a lot more coming up. Thanks for watching.